entire world, all others can trace their roots back to here at Knott's Berry Farm. Mm. <clears throat> Despite the various changes that this park has gone through since the first haunt in 1973, shadows of its past still stand today. So as opposed to me giving you like a play-by-play -play on how the event started and how it's grown over the years, I'm going to lead you to some historic hotspots here in Ghost Town to help you understand why these seemingly random locations indeed have great relevance to the haunt's history. So for starters, we're standing here on what is technically known as Main Street in Ghost Town. However, in about the past 15 years or so, this is referred to as Fog Alley in the monster community. It's shrouded with fog, monsters in the, the shadows, spooky lighting, and to me, I consider this the heart of Ghost Town when it comes to the Halloween haunt. During the event's debut, the Knott family offered various forms of entertainment to help establish this Halloween party concept. They had a host, Seymour, the master of macabre, who was a very famous television horror host at the time. He was in the theater. They had live monsters inside the log ride and the mime ride. All the stores and the food services were decorated for Halloween. And they also set up kind of carnival-like sideshows here in the midways of Ghost Town. But there was another very important form of entertainment here in the midways of Ghost Town, and that was the Wild West stunt show personnel that were dressed as monsters walking through the streets. They were the very first Ghost Town monsters here. So many, many years later, when I worked here as one of the cider monsters, I wanted to work right here. As a Ghost Town monster, you have kind of free rain to kind of go wherever you want within the confines of the scare zone. But I wanted to work right here in this, the, the heat of all the action and, and walk those same steps that those first stunt personnel did back in 1973. I wanted to be among these eerie buildings. And these buildings, in fact, have great relevance to the haunt's history. For example, right here we have the barber shop, the laundry, and the assay office. The displays inside these structures are known as pecans, and they're spread throughout Ghost Town. But in the earlier days of the Halloween haunt, they were redecorated and named startling pecans. And we have a couple pictures here to, to show you kind of a display of what those were like. They were spiffed up with spooky lighting, eerie sound effects, props. They had masks on the mannequins. But in the early, early days of the Pekins, they had live monsters hidden inside to pop out and lunge at the unsuspecting onlooker. Now, these Pekin monsters were not the same types of uh, employees as the roaming strut per stunt personnel. The Pekin monsters were hired from outside of Knott's Berry Farm solely to work these Pekins. And it was one of those monsters that played a very important role in the growth of the Halloween haunt. And his Pekin is right around the corner. I'll take you there next. So we're standing here in front of the Sheriff's Office Pekin, and just as with all of the others, this was redecorated for the earlier Halloween haunts. During the haunt of 1977, specifically the second night, a very special occurrence took place right here. The performer, dressed as a monster to work inside this Pekin, was a gentleman by the name of Bob Vernon. Bob worked his first night of haunt that year and without incident. The second night, he shows up to work, gets into his uh, costume, makeup. Guests are about to come into the park. He comes to his peek in, and just as it is now, it was locked. Guests are now coming into the park, so in sort of a frantic rush, Bob goes and finds a supervisor and says, Hey, listen, guests are coming inside the park. My peek in's locked. I need to get in. So the supervisor races over here and is fumbling through different keys and none of them work. The 
the supervisor sort of says in a nonchalant way, listen, Bob, it's going to take me some time to find the right key. In the meantime, I don't know, why don't you just go out and scare these people? And that's exactly what Bob did. However, he did so in a very aggressive manner. The guests were freaking out, screaming, running, terrified. It was pandemonium right here. In about 15 or so minutes, Bob looked over to this porch right here, and standing in the shadows were two supervisors with their arms crossed, but they were smiling. They loved what Bob was doing. So much, in fact, that the very next haunt night, they pulled all of the Pekin monsters to work and scare aggressively in Ghost Town. Set a new standard for not scary farm because no longer was it just the roaming stunt personnel dressed as monsters. Now people were hired from the outside to work and scare in ghost town. And uh, like I said, it sort of set this new philosophy on how they were going to do things and how they were hiring people. It paved the way to things like the auditions that are conducted today. So every scare zone monster that works at Halloween Haunt can trace their roots directly to that 1977 haunt, that second night, to this peek in, to this locked door. Next, I am going to take you to the location that housed the most gruesome...